What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. As always, we're having a ton of fun with the new generation over here. If you enjoyed this type of content, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does help out. And if you aren't subscribed already, make sure to hit that button. I got tons of content coming out and it doesn't cost you anything. Today's battle is a real interesting one against a pretty scary team. And let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Of course, this would not be a Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle if turn number one doesn't absolutely glitch the hell out here as I toss out my Clodsire. Uh, we get a nice, nice little clip of the ground there, and Clodsire is just floating because he's a fucking legend. Um, nice and buoyant over here as he's uh, a perfect shape for that. So, uh, he actually ends up leading off with the Iron Treads. Actually, probably should have expected that. I wanted to get my Stealth Rock up. Um, but the reason why I don't really care that much is because I can just switch directly into the Earthworm on the incoming potential Earthquake. Uh, if he wants to get Stealth Rock up, that is fine, as he actually ends up going for the Quake, and the Worm says, Fuck, delicious. Finally, some goddamn good food around this place, and I'm thinking, you know what, I don't really have much to do here other than just go right for my Iron Defense and try to set up in this thing's face. So, uh, he actually reveals to me he's going to go for the Body Press, and I'm thinking, hey, I actually, I'm going to try to Body Press you as well. Uh, but first, I gotta go ahead and make myself rock hard. Uh, there's nothing like a nice little solid Alaskan bullworm over here. <laughs> he is definitely afraid of that, so he's actually gonna switch the hell out. He decides to go into Mimosa, which is going to be the Florgis. Now, this is not a Pokemon you expect to see, uh, especially coming into his Steel type. However, I actually do not even have Steel coverage on this thing, as my main modes of attack are basically just gonna be Body Press to try to boost with that Iron Defense plus Earthquake. So I'm thinking I should probably switch out here and try to conserve... Uh, the worm, as I'm not really sure what he wants to do, but he actually ends up switching as well. He brings in the Harley. So, Shiny Cyclozar, I actually have not even seen this thing before, looking sick as hell. But on the double switch, I actually end up bringing back in Mr. Hanky, and I mainly just wanted to get up Stealth Rock, but as I'm sitting here staring at this motorcycle-ass dragon over here, I'm thinking he's definitely just going to go for the Shed Tail. Uh, so I can't really set up the Stealth Rock, and instead I have to go for the Earthquake. So, he's going to go ahead and cut his HP in half. Uh, to go ahead and set up the substitute, which then Baton passes that into whatever he would like. The one good thing about Cyclozar is you can easily predict what it's going to do. Um, so he does go for the Shed Tail into freaking Chien Pao over here. Honestly, out of all the legends, this is the one that probably scares me the most. He comes in, his ability actually weakens my physical defense. And even though I'm actually max HP and physical defense on this Cloud Sire, I do not really want to try to stay in here. Um, I do want to conserve Cloud Sire. For stuff like the Barrascuda in the back, and I decide, okay, I've got to try to make a stop on this man's sweep here, because I know what he's about to do. I know he's going to start trying to Swords Dance and get some type of setup, potentially Terastalize, and this little noodle boy is about scary as hell. So he does end up going for the Swords Dance here, and this turn I definitely need to get up my Reflect. I am Light Clay, full on support, screens, Grimmsnarl with the Parting Shot, so that's going to stick around for, um, it should be enough turns for me to kind of assess the situation here, so... He actually ends up going for the Swords Dance again, and this may well be the sharpest Jin Pao in all of the land. So that shit is frightening. And now it gets even worse because he's actually going to go ahead and Terastalize. He's going to uh, actually Terastalize full Ice types that know he's not weak to uh, Fairy type, and that boy is spooky as shit. But what that does do is this now allows me to be able to Parting Shot this thing. Once it was Dark type, I actually could not go for the Parting Shot um, because you actually cannot use uh, Prankster on... Uh, dark types, but now he's just full ice. He actually did up end up missing the ice goal crash there, which honestly you hate to see. I'm actually full special defense on this Grim Snarl, and that shit would have hurted. Uh, so I actually just go for the parting shot here. I'm able to drop that attack nicely, and now I can go into something more kind of fit to handle this. Now, behind the reflect, I do have the ability to potentially tank some stuff, but I'm thinking if there's anybody on my team that does not really help me out in this match, and I can kind of just go in for some death fodder here, it's probably going to be Belly Bolt. Uh, I actually caught this shiny belly bolt, and I figured, fuck it, I'm going to EV train this thing and bring it to a match. He actually ends up missing another icicle crash, which is honestly insane. And uh, my boy Diego got to get his eyes checked, because this guy can't see shit over here. Uh, goes for it again, and to my surprise, belly bolt thick as shit, I'm actually able to live it with 20 HP, which is amazing. And I honestly just clicked Thunder Wave just to try to play it safe here. Um, but I actually probably should have just gone for a Thunderbolt or something there, but... Uh, I do get this thing paralyzed, and honestly my main play here was basically just to sack Belly Bolt, because it does pretty much nothing for me in the rest of this matchup, and then being able, be able to bring in the Choice Scarf Annihilate, which then just kills uh, the Chin Pao. So he actually gets fully paralyzed here and cannot move, and <laughs> this allows Belly Bolt to grab his first kill, and you love to see it. I forgot to nickname this dude, so if you have any Belly Bolt uh, nicknames, go ahead and hit me with that. I just straight up forgot to, um, but... Hey, you love to see my dude grabbing himself a kill, so that's amazing. And now he gets a free switch into the Iron Tread. So now, 
I'm actually playing a little bit more safe now. Knowing that he does not have his Terrastalize, I'm in a pretty good position. I still have mine uh, if need be. And at this point, I don't really have a free switch into this. So I just decided to kind of let him take care of the Belly Bolt. There's no reason for me to really keep that thing around. It's not really going to outspeed much and doesn't provide too much value. But now this does allow a free switch into the absolute legend. I got the worst haircut in the world. But fucking Espathra is an absolute threat, and you're about to see exactly why. So... I decided to go for a Calm Mind here. Now I know that I can't touch this thing without any boost currently, but I also know I should be able to take anything that this thing wants to throw at me behind the Reflect. So my plan is to start boosting in this boy's face and then potentially be able to bait out one of his very special defensive Pokemon. He is working with both the Florges and the Gudra back there. So those are two special walls that I kind of need Espathra to be able to break here. So I go for another Calm Mind. He actually is going to end up switching out and it works perfectly. He brings in the Florges here. Young Mimosa is not even about to know what hit him. This Espathra may be the ugliest Mon of this generation, but boy, they really made up for it by making this thing an absolute beast. So I get up another Calm Mind. Now I'm sitting at plus two special attack, plus two special defense, and then with two speed boosts, I'm sitting at plus two speed as well. So I'm boosted the fuck up over here and get this boy off the steroids as uh, the Reflect actually does wear away. So totally fine with that as now we just kind of get to see what Espathra can do. So I'm faster than everything on his team. I've got boosts for days and I'm thinking, you know what? I might as well even actually Terrastalize as well. Um, I actually just put pure Psychic Terra type on this thing just to be able to boost my stored power. Uh, but with all the boosts that you're able to just kind of like get with this guy, the stored power is actually insane. And Espathra is a fucking threat. You would not be able to tell it by my dude's haircut. Got lined up by a blind guy, but straight up, I go right into the old psychic type. I now put an eyeball on my head. <laughs> I go for the stored power here. Uh, Floor just being one of the more specially defensive mons in the game, he is actually still just going to go down, especially with that extra stab from the Terra. So the ostrich is sitting pretty damn nice right now, and the beauty of it is that as I continue to get my speed boost, my stored power just grows stronger, and you love to see it. So. He decides now to go into Nickelodeon. He's talking about the dragon with the thickest thighs in the game, thickest store-bought gravy over here. And I actually do have the Dazzling Gleam coverage for it. So I just decide I'm just going to go for that. I only have two Calm Mind boosts, so it's not going to be able to one-hit KO. But I do bring it down below half. And with my Special Defense boost, I'm actually able to tank a Draco Meteor here with two HP, which is insane. Now, unfortunately, I am actually Life Orb. Um, if I wasn't Life Orb, it would be actually pretty nice, but at least this is going to be able to guarantee that with one more stored power, down goes the Gudra, and my team did not have a whole lot for that thing, so being able to break both of those walls with the Espathra provides me just so much value in the rest of this uh, end game. So, we both go down, I die to my Life Orb like a fucking captain with a ship, and uh, thank you for your service, Espathra. Do not sleep on this thing, I swear to god he ugly as shit so nobody wants to use him. Uh, but it's really good. Uh, so now we have an empty battlefield, and the best thing for me to do here is to just bring in my Choice Scarf Annihilate, who is pretty much my win condition for the rest of this match. I know that uh, I can use it to take care of Iron Treads, and I should be able to conserve it. So he actually ends up going into the Barrascuta. Um, I do not really want to risk any shenanigans here, so I just end up going for the U-turn. Uh, that is going to chip this thing to the point where I can easily take care of it later, and a close combat now is guaranteed to kill pretty much no matter what. So... Uh, here's where we actually see the beauty of kind of the synergy of this team, right? So I have uh, Water Absorb Clodsire who can come in, absolutely absorb the shit out of a liquidation like a sponge. Just making me more juicy over here. Sorry for the visual. Um, <laughs> but I also have the, uh, the ground absorption with the Earth Eater on the Worm. So I've got a whole bunch of switch-ins here, and they, they, it, it does synergize pretty nicely. So... Uh, I just decided to go for the Earthquake here. He's actually going to end up switching into the Cyclozar. Now you're thinking to yourself, he's got way more health than he had earlier. That is because this thing does actually have the Regenerator ability. Pairs super nicely with that Shed Tail. Uh, but what does work out here is the Earthquake actually puts him below half. As I'm somehow able to dodge a Draco Meteor. So I'm not going to lie, there's been some insane misses on their side of the field. And I feel bad, but I mean, you know, this is kind of the game you play. So... Dragon Meteor Miss is unfortunate, however, this thing isn't super offensive, so it's not going to be able to do too much anyway, as my Earthquake actually didn't even knock it out. He does, you know, kind of scratch the Clodsire, but this allows me one more opportunity to bring up my weird Spikes on my back and finish him off with an Earthquake. Uh, so the beauty of, again, what I have against this late game is that he cannot really Earthquake with Iron Treads against the Clodsire, just because, of course, the pressure I have with the Earth Eater Orthworm in the back. So in comes Digital Ass Donphan, um... And I just decide to stay in here, go for an Earthquake, and think he's going to go for the Body Press. He does, uh, which obviously doesn't do anything to me. He expects the switch into the Earthworm. This allows me to just go for a nice little Quake. And it's actually not able to do too much at all. This Clodsire isn't super offensive. It's mainly 
uh, here to support, provide support with Yawn and Stealth Rock and Toxic. Um, but I still got that Quake on me, bro. So now I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to go for some mind games. Now he knows that I stayed in last time. I'm thinking he's going to go for the Quake now. I bring in the Worm, eat that shit up for breakfast, and then the Worm's in pretty much position to uh, finish off the rest of the match here. But instead, he actually just goes for the Body Press once more, and that does bring me down to uh, the 30, which is going to actually... Allow me to eat my citrus, which is fine. He, 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 ate, he was able to eat something. It wasn't earth, but he got a berry instead. So, you know, not the same. But he actually does outspeed, of course. Finishes me off with one more body press. And that is honestly fine. Because, again, my win condition pretty much is just the Scarf Primeape in the back. And with a, an open switch, that's all I really need to do. Because I was able to chip uh, the Barrascuta if it was some type of weird set and could take a close combat. That could be bad. Uh, but we are still in good position here. Go for right for the close combat. Finally satisfying to kill this digital Don fan. Punch him right in his fucking LED ass face. And down goes the tread. So now the final Pokemon is going to be that Barrascuta. Uh, which shout out to using Barrascuta. Cool ass Pokemon. I've always really liked this guy. Young Barry. Um, but again, the choice Scarf Primeape is going to be able to outspeed. And I do actually still have the Cloud Sire in the back regardless. So that is going to be pretty much the end of the match there. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, again, if you guys would like to, to battle and you have uh, kind of a standard 6v6 OU team and you're looking for matches, go ahead and hit me up on Twitter. Link is in the description. That's mostly where 